Welcome back. This week we are going to go with the first tying tips that I have done in months. It has been quite some time. I've been waiting to get the multi-camera angle set up to get into a couple of these uh, that I wanted to do. The one that I've been talking about the most, I've got some stuff in the way that's gonna catch the back camera there. The thing, the, the one that I wanted to highlight the most uh, and the one that I'm most excited about, honestly, is the deer hair heads. This one's gonna take a little while because I have five t flies that are pre-tied here and I wanna go through some some differences between the deer hair head uses we're not going to get into like the body hair well we're going to use body hair but we're not going to get into like the Dahlberg divers or mice patterns to where it's hair throughout the entirety of the of the fly this one's going to focus just on deer hair heads and like i said there's a few things that i want to highlight um the two types of hair that i use um, that most anybody uses on the deer hair heads are your belly hair which is what we have right here and your body hair which is what we've got right here two different types. this is a primo strip this is a spinning hair from nature spirit both of them are very salt very good um, material to work with be selective when you're going through and picking this stuff out in the shops kelly has a ton of videos on deer hair selection uh, there's some really good information there, so I don't feel a need to um, readdress any of that. I probably couldn't do it justice anyhow. Kelly does a really good job on explaining why you select a certain style of hair or a certain type of hair for, for each application. So the thing that I want to highlight on this is the two differences outside of the belly and the body hair. The two differences on the styles of fly that we're talking about is one which is typically where you use your body hair you're building a profile you're building not necessarily something that's going to control the direction or drive or steer your your fly you're just building a profile something that's going to push water and it's going to give you the profile that you're after in order to imitate what you're trying to uh what you're trying to duplicate on your vice whether it be a sculpin whether it be some sort of bait fish whatever it is the second type that we have is like i said already something that's going to drive your fly or steer it and that's where you get to the really compact tight belly hair and that's this stuff here some of this it, it can be a crapshoot um, some of it is excellent some of it winds up being really short and tough to work with um, but it can be a little bit difficult if you're ordering online or whatever. I really recommend just going into the shop, putting it in your hand, feeling it. And, and, and there's big differences between the two. But like I said, I'm not going to get into that. Kelly does an awesome job explaining all that, so I'm not going to readdress it. Um, but the belly hair, when it's really tightly packed, trimmed really close, you're not really after a profile. You're after something that's going to make your fly dart and dive. And that's where we get into the belly hair usage. Um, let me see, there was something else that I wanted to talk about before I got to time, but it's eluding me right now, so I'll address it once we get into it. I'm sure it'll come back to me. That's what happens when you don't take notes and you just shoot from the hip. So, to start on this one, we're gonna go with the classic Kelly Gallup Zoo Cougar. This is a phenomenal fly. I still love fishing this one. Um, and the deer hair does do a lot for steering and moving this one around just not so aggressively as like a D&D &D or a Sid, um, the white girl, whatever. This, this is more of a stabilization thing. The steer or the driving mechanism on this is actually your flank feather. It's going to flutter this through the water. So we're going to go ahead and get started on this. And the what came to me now. The thing that I want to talk about, and I swear this will be the last thing I talk about before we get to actually tying, is there is constant, constant improvement and tweaking on styles, um, techniques, everything. I look at the I look at the deer hair work that I did even six months ago. And it is completely different from what I do now. I mean, it, it's a 
as minute as the way I select hair off of the hide now. And I'll talk to that one a little bit here once we get time. But seriously, everything that I do on this deer hair work gets scrutinized and it, it's just a, to continually improve. And probably a year from now, I'm gonna look at what I did on this video and be like, I didn't like that, I can do that. So there'll probably more, be more videos coming um, as I learn more techniques and styles, so on and so forth. I'll share them with you guys, so more to look forward to. The biggest thing that we're gonna do on this one, deer hair work, is 100% GSP 200. I don't use the 100 anymore, I used to. Um, it, I'm heavy handed on the vise, so it tends to cut through it. So it tends to cut through the deer hair, I should say. So after a long introduction and a lot of rambling and stuff that you guys probably really aren't all that interested in hearing about, we're gonna get into the tying. So we're gonna start with a cougar. No eyes, nothing to tie around. The whole purpose of this hair head is to create a profile to stabilize with your, um, with your collar and to create a profile, like I was saying. So let me get this in the frame. The thing that I was talking about before when you're selecting material off the hide, I used to just grab it right like this i'd take a cut through there and then you wind up with all these bumps and ridges throughout your hide this is the way your hide should look when you're when you're done after you have cut through the majority of it let me get that in the frame right there that's how it should look right there it's nice nice and even i'm getting as close to the bottom as possible on these because that's the best part of the hair is the closer you get to the bottom the more hollow this is so in order to do that i just take my scissors back behind here and I pick a section out I get that in my hand and then I get down as close to this hide as possible and trim right against that so this is what I'm going to use for the collar right here um, the collar work is you see some tires out there, Andreas, uh, Tommy Lynch, they use the collar and the deer hair. I, I haven't really ever done it that much to be proficient at it. You look at their stuff, um, they use the collar in with the head. I'm, I'm not good enough with that, honestly, to where I feel comfortable doing that. So I tie in strictly the collar only, and I, they don't stack their stuff. They just set it on there, and their flies look perfect. How they do it, I don't know. but. I always stack my collars. It's a personal preference depending on what you guys want to do. So, I'm going to measure out my collar. I'm going to throw this in the stacker here. And I'm going to grab a big, this is a big chunk. This is going to be a big beefy collar. And the measurement that I always use for this, whether it's a cougar, a dungeon, whatever, between the point of the hook and the barb. So I want my collar ending between the two of those. And then I'm just gonna transfer hands. I'm gonna cut that and it's a nice clean section right here that I'm gonna use to tie this in with. It's nice and squared off. Spin my thread. I'm gonna go one, two, a third. Not really too awful heavy on this just yet. I'm going to spread this around and then you can see on this underneath side I don't have any interference. You can see the body is nice and clean there. Everything minus that one little mallard flank that wanted to be unruly for me. But I don't have any of my collar interfering with this. So what this is going to do is it's going to stabilize your fly. As it's going through the water and you're ripping on it, it's just going to do this right here and constantly give that wobble back and forth. So. If you have this hair coming underneath, it's going to kick it and it's always going to go to one direction. So we want to make sure that we have that nice and even on that portion. And then I'm working right in front of that collar. One thing that I will stress on this throughout any portion of a deer hair head. If you watched Brian's video a couple of weeks back when he... Uh, he was going through the deer hair work and everything. The one thing that he said, and it was true for me as well, 
when I first started tying with deer hair, the, the problem that I ran into is I didn't take enough and your, your heads would wind up looking real skimpy. There's a fine line between taking, between taking enough and taking too much and you'll, you'll tweak that as you go through um, on each individual pattern. Some of them, especially the ones that are more compact, the D&Ds, the white girls, I take more than what I do on these. Um, but like I said, this one here is strictly for building a profile. So now there's a good chunk. You can see what I have right there. I spread my, um, I have it in my hand right there and then I just spread the, the fibers out, run this through the comb and get rid of any of that junk. Now, I don't wanna use any of these tips because they're non-compressible. Well, they'll compress, but not near as much as what this back half will. Get rid of some of that junk that's in there. And there we go. This is a decent amount. I probably could have got a little bit more, but all I'm gonna do on this is just spin this one. So I'm going to make sure I'm catching about the center of my bundle and I'm going to go one, two, and then a third, boom, pull that tight and you can see everything just spin around. You have a nice clean section right there and then we're not compacting this, we're not bringing this all the way back. I'm just going to push my finger right in front of that. I'm not bringing a, a packer in there like I was saying. I don't want this real compact. I want this nice and clean. I want some bulk, but I don't want a ton of material in there to where it's gonna be like a cork on the water. I want water to be able to get in between all of that. That's belly hair there, I don't want that. So now I'm gonna take another section here. And I'm gonna do this with just two stacks of hair. That's all I wanna use. Once again, getting as close to this hive as possible. Make sure I'm getting the best working material throughout this. Clean your hair out. And then grab this with the other hand. And then just get rid of the tips. There's a lot of hair right there. So I'm probably going to lose some of this. There's a lot of hair right there. All right, get rid of the tips. I'm going to bring this around, make sure that I'm not trapping anything, and then same thing, one, two, starting to get the hair to flare a little bit, and then a third, pull down, and this stuff just spins on you, it's nice and even throughout, and you have a nice clean section of hair to work with. And it's not so compact, we're right to the front of the hook, it's not so compact that it's going to be just a mess to or it's not going to interfere with the way this thing is supposed to swim. It's supposed to allow water in between all of the fibers. It's not compact like a D&D or a white girl, whatever it may be. So now we have it at this point right here. We're going to go through, and I'm not going to spend a ton of time trimming these. I'll get the overall shape, but I want to get make sure I get through and highlight all five of the different styles that I want to do. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time trimming and explaining that. I'll do that once I do the individual patterns. So what we're going to do here is just going to take our razor blade and we're going to go right to the front. I'm going to flip this around actually on the dungeon and the white girl or the dungeon and the cougar. Start on the bottom before I start trimming. I always just grab a comb, just fluff this stuff out a little bit. Clean everything up some and we're good to go. So I'm gonna start on the bottom. I'm gonna find the bottom of this hook, brace my cutting hand with my left, and I'm just gonna pull this straight through. I want this as nice flat surface on the bottom. It's gonna give that nice broad profile that a sculpin has on the head and then the pectoral fins will be coming from there. That's close enough. You can see how it's nice and flat right there. I'm not gonna get real detailed like I was saying on, on making everything just perfect. I'll focus more on that once I, once I do the individual flies. 
Now the next thing I do is I just grab my razor blade. And one thing that I did a lot when I was first starting to do these, I tried to get the profile perfect, or I tried to get the overall shape perfect on my first cut. What I do now is I start here, I can see my tips, I aim my razor blade to the tips. It makes it bigger than what it's gonna be at first, but you're not gonna cut off more hair than what you want to. If you go taking too aggressive of a cut on this one, you wind up ruining the entire head, and there's no putting the toothpaste toothpaste back in the tube once you've gotten that far, so to speak. So just stay on the conservative side, like I was saying, and just push this up. I aim right toward the tips is where I want to end everything. And this blade's just about shot. I'm gonna have to swap out here. But let's see it left a center patch there. There we go. And now once you have that established where you want your how you want your head to look you can start really fine-tuning this and then that's where it's easier after you have the overall shape it's easier to fine-tune this the dogs are going crazy back there they're going crazy you can fine-tune this as you go as opposed to trying to make it just perfect right from the start. So now I have this stuff here, instead of just taking the razor blade through that, I'm gonna just pull this out of the vise, make sure I'm in the frame there. I'm gonna cut this stuff out. I'm gonna shape it just slightly. Like I said, I'm not gonna spend a ton of time. There's still a lot that I would like to do with this, but the biggest thing that I wanna highlight on this video is application and getting things on on the hook not so much the overall trim so there we go there's the quick version of the cougar like i said there's still a little bit that needs to be done on that i'd like the head to be just a little bit more um com well i'd like it to be a little bit more compact but that'll give you the idea of what we're after there i'll trim them all up before we get the picture taken Next, we're gonna move on to the dungeon. We've got some lead eyes on this one, and it's overall the same thing. The, the idea behind the, the hair on this one is to have something that's going to create the profile of the sculpin, something that's gonna create bulk or push water. It's not necessarily a driver of the fly, but let me get my straw here. You still want a good bulky head on this one. So we'll get a straw on there. This, by the way, is my favorite color of the dungeon, this scalp and olive. Um, I probably fish this more than anything, or more than any color, I should say. So once again, I'm gonna lay this on the table. I'm gonna get the deer hair that I want. I'm gonna select this and you want your collars as bulky as possible. So get as much deer hair as you think you can fit in your stacker, you can hold in your hand, whatever it is, get as much in there as possible. Same thing, we're gonna throw this in our stacker. That's a pretty healthy chunk right there. Stack that up good. There's one or two going the opposite direction that I don't want. Grab this and then transfer it over. Same thing, I'm gonna use the measurement that I did before between the point and the barb of the hook. Lay this on there so I'm sitting right where I want it. I'm gonna give a little bit extra and then get rid of that. There's a little bit on that bottom that I don't like. Should have got my thread on there. I got too excited about the deer hair and I don't have any thread. It's all right. So there we go. Same thing with the cougar. 
get your nice clean cut right there and I got a little bit more a little bit more material than I would like I would like to oh no that works that works all right there you go we have our collar again once again no interference underneath everything's pretty clean for us um, I feel a sneeze coming on must be all this deer hair I'm cutting up must be breathing in too much of the clippings or something so now when I originally was doing these um, with the lead eyes any deer hair with lead eyes um, I would get a lot of questions folks would be like hey can you do a detailed video on how to tie these I'll tell you right now it's on a dungeon or anything where you have only this little bit to work with right here impossible to spin behind now if you have a huge gap back there you can spin behind a uh, a set of lead eyes but most likely your your head's gonna wind up being too big for the pattern so what we're gonna do is just stack here get rid of that I got not as much as I would like but it'll work it'll work all right with this like I said we're just gonna stack this so we're gonna set this right behind our eyes you can see we have a decent amount to work with make sure we're close to center on this we're gonna go one two still loose starting to move this around a little bit more and then pull straight down and it's gonna stack right on top of these eyes you can see how we have everything nice and neat there nothing is underneath now we're gonna do the same thing on the bottom you can go a little bit more sparse with your material on the bottom than you do on the top this is gonna be cut flush on the bottom just like the cougar we're going right below the eyes So we got a little bit less material here. We're going to use the same thread path that we did for the top. I'm going to go one, two loose. Third one, start to tighten up a little bit more. Hold my collar and then pull down. You can see it flares that out. All of that deer hair underneath, that's going to make a nice um profile for us once we get the rest of this tied in now i'm going right behind the eyes cleaning that up a little bit and i still have all of this in front of me to work with now here's where you can spin this in the front if you want to go ahead and stack it um i like to spin this so i'm going to take a little bit extra i'm going to take a little bit more than what i used for the top stack on this one and I'm mainly because I am going to spin this in the front if you're stacking it go about consistent with what you use in the back what you don't want to do on these patterns is put more hair on here than what's required some of these ones you see especially like the commercial ones you'll see the hair so compact and it almost looks like a bass popper it really does there's so much hair in there it's just so tightly trimmed you don't want these tightly trimmed you want like I was saying with the cougar you want water to be able to get in between all of these individual fibers and help it sink a little bit it'll shed water on your back cast as well make it easier to fish so one two we're starting to spin a little bit my third I'm going to release with this and there we go we've got a nice clean spin even distribution of hair of, of hair on the top and bottom just peel this back a little bit we're going to one two three tighten that up one two three and now I get one more whip finish in there. Go 
ahead and trim that up. Once again, we're going to go ahead and just brush all of this out. Grab my razor blade and I'm actually going to get a fresh one on this because that last one didn't cut as smooth as I would like it to. Find your bottom, make sure you know where your eyes are, and then just draw this right across it. If you go busting your eyes up with your razor blade, it's going to dull it out and you're not going to be able to trim as many of these or you'll wind up having a, a dull spot on your blade and it'll aggravate you when you're when you're trimming. So stay a little bit above the eyes on the first swipe that way once they come into view it's a little bit easier to to avoid them. Alright there's the bottom like I said nice and flush. I'm gonna get rid of those for now. Find the front of the eye and then once again, I'm aiming, I'm guiding my razor blade to the tips on this collar. And this one will make a lot more sense here because it's going to be a clean cut with a new blade. Well, semi-clean. There we go. We have our overall shape on this now. It looks absolutely terrible because it's just a big mess but like I said I mean you want to go to where it's you're you're not going to ruin the fly with one sw swipe of the razor blade it's easier to make these fine-tuned cuts after the fact than it is to try and correct an error if you've cut too much so now we'll just go in here I'm going to push this through going right back to my collar bump right there that I'm not too crazy about. There we go. That the overall shape has come into come in nicely how we want it. And you can see we still have that nice collar. There's no interference there. Once we get to this point, you can peel that collar back with your left hand and then just take this in your right hand and just brush this stuff back and then it just sink it, it it meshes in perfectly almost same thing on this side move the collar out of the way that way you don't bump it and mess it up now with the bottom of this with the straw on there I push the straw as far as it'll go forward and then I just brush this back with my right or with my blade right to the straw and it gives me that break that I'm after on the bottom. I have my blade angled down slightly. There we go. Now the straw is starting to come into view. It's not going to, I'm not going to have deer hair interfering with the body as well because I want some of that flash from the ice dub to be visible when the flies in the water. I don't want this to just be all deer hair. So there you can see what we're after. Like I said, I'm gonna trim this up a little bit more once the camera's done rolling. The last thing that I do on these, anything that has a deer hair or has a deer hair head with lead eyes, I want to be able to see the eyes. So I just take and I trim right around these. And we are good to go. All right, I promised that I wasn't going to nitpick on the trim on these. It was just going to be application that I'm really after. So I'm going to try and hold true to that as best as I can. But there's the dungeon right there. Once again, when I fine tune the trim on this one, I'll take it out of the vise and I'll trim it up cutting against the grain. But we'll leave that one as it sits right now. Next up, get rid of some of that hair I got it all over the place next up we're gonna go with the deer hair that drives a fly your D&D's your white girls your SIDS 
tightly trimmed, tightly compact deer hair that drives a fly. Not so much as an overall profile thing or imitating the, the dungeons, everything. These imitate Sculpin so much better than the D&Ds or anything, but that's not the primary design on these. These are supposed to be a driver. These are supposed to dart and dive the fly by being tightly trimmed and compact. So, I'm not going to throw a straw on this one. This one I'm going to do in a two-tone um, color combination, and I'm going to switch over to these scissors here. I like these scissors. I've been watching Kelly use these for a long time. The problem is, is I can't get them to fit over my fat fingers, so I don't, I don't use them for anything but deer hair, but they are really good scissors. Um, I use the regular MFC ones for my normal time, so they actually fit over my finger and I'm able to, to work with them pretty well. These ones I can't get past my knuckles, so I only use these for deer hair. It's just because they have a longer... Um, longer cutting surface on them than I like to use these. So, like I was saying, two-toned wedged heads. I did one on these. I did a video on these, the time tips, a while back on the brown and yellow D&D. There's some things that I want to change on that or I want to readdress, so what better time than now to do it. So we're going to go... Actually, I got the wrong color. I'm just going to throw that hair out. I'll get to that later. That's the problem having too many of these over here. I just can't figure out what color I want to use. This one I'm going to go with a tan and yellow. Like I said, we're going to make this one two-toned. And all I'm doing is selecting my collar right now. Like I said before, if you watch Tommy or you watch Andreas, these guys, when they do this pattern, they, they use the collar, I'm about to lose my comb there. They use the collar and the deer hair that comes along with it in the actual head. I'm, I'm not to the point of being able to do that yet. And honestly, I don't know that I ever really will because I, I, I don't practice it. I don't try to do it. I tie my collar, head, and then that's it. They stay separate for me, so. And you watch these guys, they don't stack their their collars or anything. Um, I, I always, always have. Ever since the first time I watched Kelly tie a cougar, it was just burned into my brain to always stack your collars. So I kind of feel like I'm cheating the system if I, if I don't. So once again, nothing new here. I'm going to take it back between the point and the barb. Find my thread because once again, I forgot that. Now this is on the A-Rex TP650, the bent hook, I'm going to restack that, I don't like the way that it's sitting, I'm going to restack that. That's better. Alright, I'm going to throw this in here, like I said, Measure it out between the point and the barb of the hook, right about there, and then get that off my knuckle. Just trim that as flush as possible. Spin this counterclockwise, that way it folds back to my hand, and I'm tying right on top, or right behind the bend of this hook. There's my collar. I'm tying right before the bend on this hook. And I'm just going to advance a little bit forward and I'm going to take another section of this tan. I'm going to peel this stuff back. I want a decent amount, but I don't want a ton. Um, I, want, I want to be able to just make a good hand section on this back side. I don't want to overtake the the head of this hook because I want to get two more colors in here. So 
let me get this out of the way. Trim off the tips as usual. And this is a little bit on the short side to work with, but we'll make it work. We're going to get this deer hair in here. I want to catch this in the center of my workable material. One, two, and I'm going to bring a third. Now I'm going to release this and I'm just going to push my hand through here and I'm going to start working this down to the bottom. If you've watched Brian's video, you see Andreas do this. The dude ties some phenomenal deer hair heads and you can see it has an equal distribution of hair on the top and the bottom. And then you just work this right through here. And now you can push this back. If you want to with this, this is where you can take these, these packers and everything and you can push this material down through there. This is a little bit overkill for, for what I'm working with here, but uh, it was, the closest packer that I have available to me, so that's the one that I used. Now, same thing, that little bit of tan or brown, whatever color you want to call that, that's sitting there is going to get captured by this yellow that I'm about to throw in, but as I peel this back, you can see that I have a nice clean break right there. I'm going to go into some yellow because I want a vertical break on the head. Now, does it matter really? No. Um, it's just, I, I enjoy the challenge of getting different colors, having a nice clean break. When you're tying 50 of these in a row, um, I don't know, it gets kind of, kind of old and you always, I always challenge myself to be like, well, let's see if I can, if I can do this better, if I can do X, Y, and Z better, whatever it is. So the, the clean breaks is one thing that I take a lot of pride in um, on my commercial patterns. So in order to do this, I take my ring finger and my thumb and then my two fingers on top here, my middle and my pointer, and I clear all of the deer hair out of the way possible. So now I'm tying nothing but my yellow in, one, two, get a third there. I'm not going to spin this. I'm going to do the same thing that I did before. Boom. Now pull back toward the eye of the hook. You can see how we have that equal distribution. Once again, work the way to the front. I'm going to get just barely enough room to tie my last little section in here. But the key with these DMDs, with the SIDs, the unholies, the clown cars, the uh, white girls, you name it, these compact wedged heads that are going to, to move your fly for you, is you want as much hair in here as possible. So, I'm gonna push this back once again. And you can see I only have basically two or three thread lengths of, of hook that I'm able to work with right there. And I need to get a clean break between the two now. So I'm going to take still a decent amount of deer hair on this. Still a decent amount of deer hair. Clean this up in the in the comb. Get that tightened up. It's starting to spin away from me. I'm gonna put the scissors through my thumb, so we may have some red in this one too. Once again, I'm going to be going, get the deer hair out of my nose, I'm going right over top of this ring finger and my thumb are pulling underneath. I'm holding this down 
with my pointer in my middle and it's going to be one, two, get a third, and I'm just going to work this around, pull down. One, I'm going to just push that a little bit more in there. You can see I have that nice and compact. One, two, three. I have just enough room to whip finish here. Maybe. Shorten this thread up a little bit there. should take this hook out of the vise and have that angle up. I'm trying to whip finish while it's sitting down and my thread wants to just fall right off of there, but we got it eventually. It just took me a little longer than it should have to get there. So now we're going to take, and when I trim these DMD heads, SIDs, whatever it may be, spin this around, just fluff this out as always. I always take and I spin my vise toward me. It's just easier for me to trim these if I have it facing me. So then what I do is I just take this, I find my center, I go right up through here. I make a pretty decent, decently aggressive cut on this first one. And you can see that nice clean break that I'm after between the tan and the yellow. And then I get a little bit more aggressive going through here, working right back to the collar. Underneath side. Once again, nice clean break between the tan and the yellow. And a little bit sparse on that tan in the front, but I'll probably rush that just a little bit. Probably got a little bit too much yellow in there. That's all right. For all intents and purposes, you're able to see what I'm after here. Once again, bring that around. Go on this under, underneath side. And I just follow the, the, the hook on the way back. I find the, I find the eye of the hook and I just push this through. Same thing on the opposite side, find the eye of the hook, follow that path on the way back. Now I'll spin this back around and I'm just going to take the, the razor blade in one hand and I'm going to work this right through here. But like I said, I'm not going to get real detailed on the trim on these. say that but I can't help myself I can't help myself all right I swear I'm gonna, I'm gonna calm down I'm just going to get the overall shape that I want on this and then I'll move this one out of vice. All right, we'll call that good. I'll finish trimming that one up to where I'm happy with it, but you can get the overall idea of what we're after right there with the way that one sets in the vice. Next up, we only have two more to go here. I'm going to get through these here pretty quick. Um, next up is we have the clown car. 
This one is just going to be a solid red head on the front of this. Same thing, it's a wedge style. We're going to put the collar in. Get a decent amount of red hair on this one. On a pretty solid collar. Pretty bulky collar, I should say. Now this head, the difference between this one and the D&D I just did there is it is going to be just one solid color instead of a two-tone. So we'll get this in the vise. Get that out of the way. Tighten this up. It's wanting to spin on me. All right, get our collar in here. Same thing as before, nothing new on this collar portion. We're gonna set that right over the top between the barb and the eye, or between the barb and the point of the hook. Knock off this section here. So I'm tying with just a nice square piece of deer hair. And this is gonna be my collar. Push this down, flare the, the collar out, look on the underneath side. I'm still nice and clean right there. I have no interference on the bottom. And then there we go. Now, with this one, I the goal is to always do this with only two stacks of hair. So I'm going to take just an insane amount of hair once again, cutting that as close to the hide as possible. Take as much hair as you can possibly fit in your hand. Clean it out. And we're going to cut our tips off. Get out of here. There we go. I want to set this right in the center. So once again, I'm catching the center of the, the body of this hair with my thread. There's two, there's a third. Now, I have everything nice and secure right there. Like I said, they're loose wraps, and I'm just working this around the hook. I'm pushing this deer hair to the bottom, and then I'm gonna pull back and you can see how that flares out right there now all i'm going to do is just work this through here and it's pulling hair down to the bottom it's a spin stack combination move this back as best as i can with my hand if you want to you can run a packer through there again but i'm going to work with just that one section right here i'm going to take just slightly less than what i did on the first stack right there. Cleaning this out again. Cut the tips off. There we go. I'm gonna bring this around. Capturing all the deer hair with my ring finger. And then I just throw what I want to tie in right over the top. Ring finger and my thumb are capturing the stuff on the bottom. And then I go one, two, a third one. Same thing, start to work that around. And pull back toward point of your hook. Get the eye available. That way we're able to finish this. And then one, two, three. We're good. One, two, three. 
There we go. And then with this one, it's the same thing. Um, I'm not going to go through the trimming process because I'm probably running this video pretty long here and I got one more thing that I want to get to. So I'm not going to go through the trimming process. It's the same. I turn it toward me, I work it through. I'll highlight that more as I do these individual patterns, like I was saying. I'll trim that one up later on. Last one that we're going to do this is the white girl. This is on the bent front hook. I bend these myself. They're 30 degrees toward the camera and then about a 5 to 10 down. These things swim like crazy. One of my favorite patterns that I have designed to date. I love watching these things swim. So once again I'm going to grab my straw here. I'm going to cover up my marabou so I have a nice clean surface to work with or a nice clean area to work with. Get everything out of the way and I'm going to work back to the pre-bend or right prior to the bend I should say. And we're going to do this one in olive and white if you haven't been able to, to guess by the, the color combination on this so far. So the difference between this one is that it's going to be a pure stack with two different colors on the top and bottom. There's a few things that I want to highlight on this that I've found over the last couple of years that make it easier to stack and differentiate between your colors on the top and bottom. So I'm going to add this into the into my stacker. I'm going to get everything how I want it. I'm rushing through this a little bit because you've heard this four times already. So I'm not going to go into too much detail on this collar. Right before the bend of the hook, just one, two, and then third, pull this down, move this around so your collar, once again, is not interfering with the bottom. Now, when I stack these two tone colors, I always start with the bottom. It's so much easier for me to have a clean surface to work with on the top and it's so much easier for me to differentiate between colors if I start on the bottom. And like I said, this is gonna be a pure stack. It's not a hybrid stack spin, anything like that. I want it to be a pure stacked color combination. And then I'm gonna spin one in the front. So, once again, take these tips and trim them find the center of your hair, the easiest portion to work with, and remember that your hook is bending away from you, so have that hair follow the travel of this hook. Get one wrap around here, there's one, two, it's starting to flare out on me, and then three. Work that down to the bottom, pull this tight, and your hair flares for you. Now you can see we have a nice area to work with on the top here. There's going to be a nice way to differentiate between our two colors on these stacks. I'm going to go back to the olive. This is a long video for sure. Well, not as long as some of the ones I've done. I'm trying to get as much detail in this as possible, so I'm probably rambling more than I should and not tying as fast, but hopefully it helps out. If not, hey, people have shut these videos off a lot sooner, I'm sure. All right, once again, I'm following the same thread path. I don't want any of this white to interfere or travel into my olive. So I'm keeping my thread travel as short as possible. If I have long thread travel, meaning if my thread is, you know, that much longer or ending where my bobbin is right now, I have a tendency to trap stuff. So I got those three nice wraps. I pull this tight and then pull this stuff back. I'm just working it back with my fingers. If you want to, 
Once again, you can use the packer. I don't really feel it necessary to do that. So, there's going to be some onesies and twosies that I'll pick out that are going to be in my way and it's going to be a different color than what I want it to be. Get out of there. Now, like I was saying, I used to stack these continuously the entire way through. I would go green and white top and bottom. I like the way that it looks a lot better um, or a lot more if I just spin one right in front of this and then you have just that one white section underneath and on the sides. So that's what I've been doing here lately. But like I said before, six months I may have something completely new that I do and then I'll have to put a video out to explain that. I don't know. Who knows? But this is the way that I like to tie these white girls to 390U's now. Just all one solid color in this very front. So I go with the olive and I'm just going to be a, this is going to be a pure spin, one, two, and then a third. Holding this white with my ring finger and thumb still. And I got a little bit too much deer hair on that. That's all right. I'm just going to work this right through here. I'm going to get that olive to still travel down to the bottom. Oh yeah, we're good. We're good. So we did a spin stack combo on that one instead of, I got a little carried away with the amount of deer hair that I used there, but it's still going to work for us. There's the three. Try to get one more on there. There's the three. Go ahead and trim that out. And get rid of the scissors. Once again, brush this out. Nice and clean. Back to our razor blade. Now, like I was saying before, with the dungeon and the cougar, pushing this I'm aiming right for the tips of my, I'm aiming right for the tips of this collar. And then I'll get the overall shape that I want. Everything's coming into form pretty well there. The underneath side, remember that you're working on a bent hook here, two different directions. Get the overall shape that I want on that. Now I'm taking a real aggressive swipe into the bend on this hook. Real aggressive into the bend. shape of this is really starting to come in. I'm going to work on my side of this hook now, or my side of this head. I'm going to get the shape again. Just spinning this around. I want my side to be rounded, this side to be flat, so when the water catches this, it darts it to one side and it gives it a semi-horizontal rotation. Just going through, cleaning this up. I'm getting the overall shape that I want. I'm gonna get a little bit more aggressive on the front section of this now. There we go, same thing on the bottom. Get a little bit more aggressive and then I'll just fine tune this after I shut the camera off. There's some hair that's just going all over the entire head of this fly and back into the collar, which I'll clean that up in a little bit. But like I was saying, like I was highlighting before, these nice clean breaks right here you can see between my two colors, there's no white traveling into the olive and vice versa. There may be one or two back there, but that's about it. And then the same thing on this underneath side. I have that nice clean break 
that I'm after. The last thing that I'll do on these before I get them to where I'm ready to fish them is I'll, like I said, I'll, I'll fine tune the trim on this and then I'll throw some eyes on the D&Ds, uh, the white girl, the clown car, I'll throw some eyes on there, uh, throw some um, UV on top of it, hit it with the torch and we're good to go. Outside of that, I have just a crazy deer hair color combination sitting in my lap here. Uh, just a pile of stuff all over the place. But I really hope this helped you guys out with some of the some of the different techniques, some of the different ways that we use deer hair on these heads. I'll highlight these and I'll probably do more videos as I learn better control or if there's something else that I learn that works so much better for me, I'll do more videos. Like I said, as I learn or as I pick up techniques, I'll share them with you guys as much as possible. Once again, I hope this helps out. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them with me and I'll get back to you. But thanks as always for watching and we'll catch you on Wednesday on the next fly.